We've talked at length on this channel about how amazing Flux is as an AI image generation model. In fact, it's often been referred to as the mid-journey killer or better than mid-journey. However, did you know that the most commonly used Flux model on the internet, Flux Dev, is actually not a commercially safe model. That's right, the version of Flux that is most commonly used in YouTube channels, and in fact, a lot of the apps out there, actually does not have commercial terms by default. If you look over here at the contract, you can see that there's nothing here that allows commercial terms. And in fact, it's the Schnell model that is recommended for commercial use. Now, on the Black Forest website, it does say that you can reach out to them to get commercial permission to use the model, but it's not something that's available by default. And I'm pretty sure that most small startups that are using Flux Dev are not doing so with permission from Black Forest. Now, that can be a problem if you want to use the Flux model that allows you to use ControlNet and other ways to manipulate the output. So what are you to do if you're unhappy with Flux Schnell and you want to use a dev quality model in your project? Well, I might have a solution for you today. So Jake Burkett, also known as Ostris, has released a bunch of cool stuff in the past related to stable diffusion and I believe released one of the Laura trainers on Replicate has come out with what he calls Open Flux 1. What this is, is he's actually taken the Flux Schnell model and de-distilled it. What does that mean? Well, Schnell is an incredibly fast model, very similar to the Stable Diffusion Lightning. And the reason for that is that it's what is called a distilled model, where it takes the essence of the model that it's based on, in this case, I'm guessing it was dev or pro, and simplifies the pathway so that we're able to generate images substantially faster and with a lot less resources. The downside of that is that there are limitations in how we can manipulate the output and the images tend to have a look and feel that is what we've become accustomed to in Lightning models. What Jake has done is he has managed to take this model and the fact that it comes with an Apache 2.0 license, which means you can use it for free commercially, and he has retrained it to try and bring back the dev quality outputs that we get with the dev model, but this time with the Apache 2.0 commercial model. So today, I'm going to show you guys how we're going to get that set up on Comfy UI, and we're going to run through a few generations to compare it to Pro, Dev, and Schnell. So let's get plugged in. So over here, we've got the Ostris Open Flux model page on Hugging Face. Uh, links are down below. And we can see here, he's got some examples, Open Flux 1. Uh, we've got here this chemical lab. Uh, this is a really good example showing the use of text. And once again, down here. So the model looks pretty solid overall, and it definitely doesn't have the kind of texture, I guess, that lightning models uh, are known to have. So to install it, it's pretty simple. Now, you might think that you'd need to go to the Ostris Open Flux Hugging Face to install the model. However, it's not that straightforward. If you go to the first link down below, which is the Ostris Open Flux, we do need to grab the 1.0 Fast LoRa Save Tensors. Now, this particular model here should work and there is a couple of workflows floating around. However, I've not been able to get them to work. They all require these weird custom nodes that you can't get directly through Comfy or they either didn't install properly and I just spent two entire days trying to get this to work and I just couldn't. So with a little bit more research, it actually turns out that there's a version of the model released by Kijai that is specifically for Comfy UI. So you're gonna use this model, not the one on the Ostris uh, URL. And again, that link is down below. And that should resolve all of the problems and uh, I'll show you guys the workflow that you need in just a moment to get this working. So you're gonna go ahead and grab the LoRa and put that into your Comfy UI LoRa folder. As usual, I'm using RunPod, but this should apply whether you're using Mac, Windows, Linux, the same file structure applies. So just go to your Comfy UI folder into models, and LoRa, and you can drop the fast LoRa's uh, safe tensor there. And then the Kijai, uh, OpenFlux Comfy, go to Files and Versions, and over here, OpenFlux FP8 EM4 M3 FN .safe tensors. go ahead and download that to your unit folder, much like we've done with regular Flux. And I've got it over here. In terms of setup to get it up and running. Now, uh, let me show you the version of this available uh, at my Patreon, the links are down below. And this is a bit of a blend between your usual Stable Diffusion, Excel, and the Flux workflow. We've had to take a couple of nodes from both and mesh them together to get them to work. Uh, this is the best solution that I've been able to come up with Open Flux. If anybody comes up with a better workflow, please do come by our Discord and share it with the group. Uh, I'm sure a, we'd love to hear from you if you're able to get a better version of this working. I'm also going to continue to play with this. So over here on the left, we have a pretty standard flux loaders, a, the load diffusion model, dual clip loader, 
and we're using the LoRa node as well. Now, this is really important. Uh, again, from what I've read, the LoRa that we're using here is meant to make the model run faster, but I uh, don't get good results without it. So the way that it works is load diffusion model connects into the load LoRa, as does the dual clip loader. And then from here, we feed the model into the case sampler. Uh, and I'm actually not passing on the clips. Instead, what I have is from the dual clip loader, the clips go into the positive and negative prompts. Uh, you could also try it from the LoRa, but I, I again, didn't notice too big of a difference. Then from the positive and negative prompt, they actually feed into the original case sampler, the one that we've always used with stable diffusion. Uh, and then from here, it goes into the VE decoder with the flux VE. Now there's a couple of modifications to the settings that are really, really important. If you run it as is, you will get some okay results. However, uh, if we come through here, you'll notice that the images either have this very blurry look or they have this almost stable diffusion 1.5 look where it's just kind of not realistic, not really drawn. And you can see here, you know, various attempts at trying to bring it back. The secret lies in adjusting the load LoRa strength. So as you can see here, I have my strength model set to 0 0.72. I find that a number between 0 0.7 and 0 0.8 is kind of the sweet spot. And then rather than using the simpler scheduler uh, as we do with Flux, I find that Taras works exceptionally well. Uh, you want to make sure your CFG here is set to 1 and your steps are set to 30. Now, what this does mean is you don't really have uh, a very usable CFG scale. Again, I find that if you push this up beyond one, you end up with a, a little bit of that graphic design pasty style look. Uh, if you bring it to underneath uh, 1.0, it does get a little bit more realistic, but you start to have uh, funny things happen. Like, for example, we can see here, this was about as close as I had gotten with previous testing. And then when I lowered the CFG to 0 0.5, uh, I ended up with this monstrosity. And at 0 0.9, we kind of get something similar, but you start to see people in the background. So right now, I guess that would be the kind of closest thing that you have to giving the model a little bit more freedom is lower that uh, CFG from one slightly. But there's probably a better way to do this. However, you know, reading through the model page, Right, we can see here that they do suggest to use classic CFG instead of the flux one and to leave it at 3.5, but that just created all kinds of weirdness from me. So uh, some additional testing will be required. So I'll throw up here a couple of examples that I've tested out earlier of OpenFlux versus DevFlux. All of these are based on prompts from our sponsor, Prompt Crafters, which is this absolutely fantastic prompt database that allows us to kind of go through this visual table and kind of figure out what we want to use as a prompt as a starting place. All of these have been tested with Midjourney and Flux. The examples are from Midjourney and Flux and they've got all kinds of categories, neon art, character art. Uh, in this case, I used the portrait photography category to kind of get those realistic looks. And I just grabbed a couple of prompts from here. It tweaked them slightly like this one uh, or this one, you know, we can just grab it drop it in and then just kind of come in and make the modifications to our taste and our preferences to get the image that we want. So all of these images were done using that as a baseline. It helped me get in, modify the prompts really quickly. I will put them along with the images. You'll see them in the text below. And that's pretty much it. It's a pretty quick video today, but a very important one, I think, especially if you're looking for Flux for commercial uses. As I said earlier, it's not really being enforced, but you probably don't want to be in a situation where you could be in trouble for using Flux Dev when you don't really need to, and especially now that you know we have other options like OpenFlux. I hope you found this video helpful. If you do find a better way to use OpenFlux, please do come by our Discord. We'd love to hear it. And don't and forget to like and subscribe. It really helps the channel out. If you really want to support me, come by the Patreon. Your support helps me continue to making these videos. And finally, if you enjoy the music in the background, uh, I actually have a separate channel where I post all of the music that I make that I use on this channel. Thanks so much, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.